Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. It's all about spirits of fashion. Yes, go to the website, spiritsoffashion.com. And of course, you have an amazing podcast schedule ahead here with our friend, Karen, better known as Ren Antonovich, joining us here to talk more about all she does. And amazing that she teaches the fashion of history and also is helping so many people uh, with these beautiful period pieces and the work she does. She's back today to show us actually some of the collections and uh, we're going to talk to her about more of her presentations today and how she could come present for you. So, Ren, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Jill. Hope you are too. I am. Thank you so much. Chilly day in Vermont or is it yeah. still a little warm? We had a little sprinkling of snow this morning. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I thought I overslept for two months because I saw snow on the ground. Oh, my it's already goodness. Gone. <laughs> and that's yeah. and you're in Chester, Vermont, right? So that's correct. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do. Okay. Well, I go throughout New England right now doing mm -hmm. um, in-person, mostly in-person, some virtual presentations on history of fashion, all different eras. It could be as um, old as the Tudor period. It can be as late as 1980s, if you'd like. But I cover all different eras and talk about what was going on at the time and how the fashions were influenced by that. Uh, and what was going on at the time. So fashions were definitely influenced by everything from music, politics, what was going on socially, um, economically. So it's definitely a fun topic for most people. Um, I do see plenty of seniors because I do a lot of senior centers yeah. and libraries and residential homes for seniors. So, uh, but I do see some young people as well. So Beautiful. lots of fun. And how do we contact you? Share the website again? Yes, it's spiritsoffashion.com. Okay. I also have an Instagram at Spirits of Fashion Passion and a Facebook at Spirits of Fashion. Ooh. Also a YouTube channel, same thing, Spirits of Fashion. Yes. And for today, I know you're going to walk us through a little bit about uh, some of your pieces. And uh, for those that may not know first, though, just a little more about your background. What got you into this and started? Well, I started out with another career and mm -hmm. just never loved it, never was inspired really by it. Um, but I went for a good 20 years without knowing what else I sh should do, except open a vintage store because I was fascinated <laughs> with vintage clothing and accessories and started collecting them in my late 20s. Um, and I suffered through a lot of years of being not very content with my career and finally was talking to a friend uh, when I was pretty much at the end of my rope. And I asked him, you know, I said, any advice from you, you know, I just can't do any more of this work. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know, I love vintage and antique clothing, but, but I can't go to school for that. And I can't yeah. afford to open a store. He said, oh, you can go to school for it. This is how the universe works, folks, in my opinion. Ooh. I didn't know this, but at URI, University of Rhode Island, where I went as an undergrad, has a program with a master's and a concentration on historic dress and textiles. And I did not have any idea of that. That was the turning point of my life. It changed mm -hmm. everything. I went back to school, taught for 13 Amazing. years at the college wow. level, and eventually um, was asked to do a program such as I do now for uh, the anniversary of the Titanic. So this was 2012. I did mm -hmm. it for the library. And that's when I knew that was my audience. So I've been doing it ever since. Amazing. Well, congratulations yeah. on this. And we're excited that you're here again today. And, um, you know, just to point out, uh, you're available. What areas are you working in mostly? I know people can hire you, right? I mean, really anywhere. But yes, uh, to, to give me a little bit of that uh, background. So where can we find you? People okay, can well, I do on my website, I do have um, both a newsletter that you can sign up for that's free. It tells you where I'm going to be and what the topic is. It's also on my Google Google calendar on mm -hmm. the website. Same thing. Um, but virtually, if people, uh, if, if they can't bring me out there, um, it's expensive to travel, I know. But if I can do in-person presentations anywhere, if um, you know they want me to travel there, otherwise I can do any one of them virtually. And yeah. the only difference is it's the same program. The only difference is when I'm showing the clothing and accessories from whatever period I'm talking about, 
you can't touch them because you're not there with me. That's the only difference. It's still educational. It's still fun. I talk about all the things I talk about in person. So that's the only difference. Yeah. Um, but I would love to do these anywhere who would like to hire me. And, and uh, I will even special, specially design a program. If you have a certain thing in mind and I don't already have it done on my website, it doesn't mean that I can't do it. I won't do it. Yeah. Just so <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, because style never dies. And, um, you know, with your presentations, I know throughout the area, you really uh, bring some amazing pieces uh, without breaking the bank, as you say, but you have some, uh, I don't know which one's behind you. You have the Mad Men yeah. era, right? You talked about the silver. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. do you have? What do you want to show us today? I can't wait to see. Well, for, first of all, I always tell my audience what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing a cool jacket from the from the 40s. Oh wow. Uh, long story short, the 40s during the wartime, only a certain amount of material could be used because it was needed for the war effort. So they had to get very creative with the design. They these do have a small amount of shoulder padding in them and okay. a really cool design. Jill, you can see it. I know the audience yep. uh, we see it, but it's just a really cool jacket. And I'm wearing my mother's hat from the 40s as well. So it's just the hats were the thing that people could go a little crazy with because most of the materials weren't needed for the war. So they could have a lot of fun with hats. Um, but I'm going to start with a 20 stress that I have. This was found by my niece. Believe it or not, a woman was selling a whole collection of 20s pieces from her family. She only wanted them to go to somebody who would appreciate them. She sold the whole 12, 13 uh, pieces for $5. What? And this was one of them. And it's a beautiful uh, salmon colored satin dress with beautiful um, buckles in diamond tay and with the low waistline. And there's also another buckle right up here at the shoulder. I know that can't be seen, um, but I'm trying to grab that there for you so you can see it, Jill. So this is one of the pieces that's in perfect condition. I try to take very good care of the clothing. Some of it does get wow. damaged or has been damaged, but not by my audiences or me. It just over time, sometimes silk yeah. shatters. But this piece is still in incredible condition. How do you store all this? Just curious. I mean, oh, like, well, I know it's I have out for it today, but like, what do you normally yes. do? Depending on the piece and the age, some pieces are so fragile that I put them in boxes. I don't keep them on hangers anymore. Okay. And it's recommended that acid free boxes and acid free tissue be used so that whatever's coming from regular paper and regular boxes doesn't damage the fabric. Um, oils from your hands can damage fabric as well, which okay. is why I wore white gloves all through grad school. But these pieces are in uh, very good condition. I'm very careful with them and I want my audience to be able to enjoy them. So I do bring those with me and I don't make them wear white gloves, but they're very respectful. Um, and I, like I said, I keep them stored either in a closet if they can handle that um, or in my uh, fold up boxes in the basement. <laughs> good oh. thing we have a big basement. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you for sharing that. And let's see what else is on okay. tap for us today. Another 40s jacket. Ooh. This is incredible. It's crepe. I found it in San Diego in the late 90s in a vintage store. Um, Victory Pin is from Besame, which is a cosmetics company that um, reproduces cosmetics from different periods. It's amazing. They do have great products. Uh, but this, look at the sailor style. Wow. This jacket. The back is what's so stunning. I wish you could all see it. It's incredible. So that's my 40s piece. It does have a little bit of padding. It's definitely a 40s jacket inspired, okay. of course, by the Navy forces. The next few pieces are from the 50s. I've never Ooh. seen how the sweaters in the 50s were usually on the short side with uh, either three quarter sleeves or long sleeves. Okay. And they often have a crepe lining, but I've never seen one with sequins completely over the entire jacket. Yeah. And this one is light pink and dark pink, like a bright pink. And it's an wow. ombre design. Um, and I just will mention, I also pulled out a couple of pieces that I bring when I do uh, one of my events on styling with thrifted and vintage items, because oh. these should be statement pieces. I help my seniors to not feel so invisible by 
helping them to see that they can just add something that's a statement to an outfit that's sort of plain, but still feel like they're being stylish and very unique. Wow. So this is one of the pieces, not only for the 50s, but also for my seniors. So Got there's it. another oh. sweater is this one. Wow. Is, uh feels like cashmere, doesn't have a label uh, to tell you what, you know, they didn't have to have the labels to have all of that information back then. But it does have a beautiful label. It says Joseph the Furrier, a lace lining with satin under there. This is fur. I don't believe in wearing new fur, but this is vintage. And I'm just carrying on the life of this piece that was so beautifully made with the gorgeous yeah. stone clip. So this is another statement piece, but it's also from the 50s. Okay. And this is part of a suit, but I just thought I'd show you the jacket. Another fur a collar piece, beautiful jacket. Uh, it's tan, for those of you who can't see it, with a mink collar. Mm -hmm. And then one button. And then the back has this bow, it's gathered and has this cool bow detail right here. So it's, and it's a long skirt, of course below yeah. the because it's 50s and then I do the swing in 60s too that's a really popular one especially for seniors because they remember either wearing it or having relatives who wore it so I actually for those of you who don't know one of the designers of the time that was very big was Emilio Pucci okay and Emilio Pucci designed very psychedelic type designs uh, in his clothing and accessories all different color combinations and always signed his fabric with Emilio. And really? Skirt. Let me yeah. see this. You can see this right here. Jill, you can oh, see Oh, wow. <gasps> yeah. That is beautiful. No, I did not buy this. I was fortunate enough to get this from a, a colleague that when I was teaching, her mother owned this and she said, I want you to have it. I know what you do. I know that you love doing that. Oh, so that's beautiful. It doesn't fit me anymore. The mm -hmm. weight is way too small. So um, another one is this Nehru jacket. And talk about a statement piece. I got this at auction. It's pink, orange, and silver. Mm -hmm. um, incredible with the Nehru collar from the late 60s. Hot pink lining and had been a G Fox specialty shop on the fifth wow. floor original. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I grabbed it at auction. Um, and it could be worn today, just like all of these other things could. It's in perfect condition. Wow. Next one is a dress that I always wear myself for the swing in 60s. This is oh. a psychedelic. 60s oh, wow. Dress. Perfect for the period. Handmade. Mm -hmm. It might have been someone's um, home ec project. Who knows? In high school. Yeah. But it's completely lined with orange. And in incredible condition. I have worn this so far many times and you can't kill it. It's in great shape because they made things to last. Yeah. Here is this beautiful psychedelic print dress. And um, then the last thing I thought I would do is show you some of the things for my seniors. Now, any of the things that I've picked out and shown could be worn by seniors just to give that unique look. There is a um, blog that's become movies. It's called Advanced Style. Okay. And it's by a gentleman named Ari Seth Cohen, who was inspired by his mm. grandmother's style. And he photographs women all over New York who have this great, unique style. Iris Apfel, who passed recently at, I think, 102, she um, had that style. And she was one of the ladies that, that were featured in one of his films. But I find things like this crazy jacket that is a lime green, sort of a felt oh. that has this screaming gold mm -hmm. line and all kinds of detail and pockets. Mm. And my seniors go crazy. They just say, like, where did you find this? They say, I found it in a thrift store. You know, you can find things for really, really little money and change your personal style completely. And if it's too scary... Yeah. Start with something like this. Start with an accessory. Start with a bag, a belt, a hat, something that puts a little stamp on who you are and expresses the person you are now, whether you're a senior, whether you, uh, you are a uh, still in school and you want to dress a little differently, you're going out into the work world. But I believe in expressing. I think style expression 
people are afraid to do that. But dig mm -hmm. down, see who you really are authentically, and then show people. And you will get compliments, I promise you. Because if it's right for you, people will want to be like that and say, yeah. I wish I had the, the courage to dress like that. Yeah. And the last piece is another crazy piece, which I got at a thrift store. Again, it's all sequins. It's not old. Okay. Uh, but it's it looks like a performance type jacket, almost a tuxedo type, but it's all sequins, all different colors. And then a friend of mine bought me this at a thrift store because she said, boy, I think of you, Ren, whenever I saw <laughs> this, I had to buy it. It's a tie covered with beads and sequins. Oh, my I goodness. Probably got for a couple of bucks. So how do you, how do you clean that? Do you, can you dry clean that or it melts? Many. Well, that is a very good question. If I don't need to dry clean something, if I'm not worried, you know, really worried about any problem with it. I don't do it because I do agree that you can melt sequins and I don't want to do that, especially um, if you don't know the origin of the piece or how old the piece yeah. is. Yeah. And so I, I mean, I, what I do sometimes is hang things outside and just let them get some fresh air. And so I, I do dry clean a lot, but if I can't do that, I'll definitely just air it out. And then I feel better about at least, or you can steam, you can yeah. steam, you have a good steamer. Be careful of not melting things, but you can steam fabrics and that does both clean it and iron it in a way, you know, get the wrinkles yeah. out. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you yeah. so much for this tutorial. <laughs> Anything else? What about the earrings, by the way, that you're wearing? Oh, these are new. I just got them at the thrift store at, oh, that see? I work at. I, I love that you shop at thrift stores. You can find such great mm -hmm. stuff there. You can. And some people get, you know, they don't like the idea of wearing something that's been worn before. Or they think it might be dirty or whatever. Most things you can take home, throw in the washer, or like I said, dry clean or steam yeah. it. And you're going to be pretty sure you're going to be just fine. Well, um, do, do, you know what the great, my greatest comparison, with yeah. just to piggyback off that thought is, here are people who are wearing diamonds and jewelry. They're mm -hmm. used. Like I never knew. Oh, yeah, that's that, right. That's right. right. You, get, you get a diamond ring, but that ring has been somewhere... It's it's very unheard of to buy a, a, a oh it's a new diamond ring but that ring has been to from someone to someone to someone to someone it's not freshly yeah. mined for you these diamonds no. get circuit right I love it that yeah, way exactly. yeah well the Look other thing is you go to a new a new store right tags are still on something how do you know how many people tried that thing on before you bought it exactly. right exactly yeah it's the same idea in my opinion. But my point for seniors, again, I wanted to emphasize them a little bit because I see so many. Yes. And what I love about it is that I hope to allow people of a certain age, even men, not just women, men, to try a little harder because it makes you feel not, it's not about looking younger. It's about feeling vibrant I and agree. feeling good in your own skin. I mean, I'm, I'm a woman of a certain age and after a certain period of time, we'll call the change, even though it's really called menopause, <laughs> your body does change, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you give up and say, oh, I don't care what I look like anymore. So true. You know, yeah. It makes me feel a million times better when I get something on that I feel good in, throw a little makeup on, and it just makes me feel better about me, which gives me more to give to other people. Yeah. It, it really does. So um, I hope that helps people, you know, understand what I do and how I can help their groups, whether they're seniors, whether they're people who come to historical societies, libraries. It's about history and style, not just about fashion at all. I do cover a lot about what's going on in an era. So World War II, for example. I was going to say, what eras? Fashion. Walk us through all that you that you yeah. are okay. an expert in. Um, let's see, I, the Tudor fashion, it's, there's, you know, a very small group of people who ask for that because it's, it's way back and not everybody's interested in that, but I, I love it. How way uh, back is the Tudor age? Is it it's the 1500s into the 1600s. So starting with Henry the eighth and the early 1500s, and then into the very early 1600s when Queen Elizabeth died. So, um, that, that's the main period where, um, there's a lot of fancy dress for men, you know, it wasn't just women and mm -hmm. that continued until the French revolution at the end of the uh, 18th century, because men still dressed very fancy. Those who could afford it, those who were nobility 
course, the king and queen mm -hmm. who were on the upper class segment of society would wear velvets and laces and even heeled shoes for men. And a lot of people don't realize that. And they think, well, isn't that effeminate? No, it was considered very masculine. Big, big curly wigs. Uh, Charles II in, um, in England had a big giant curly wig, like came up really high and was really long and fantastic. But now, I mean, the 60s, yeah, you'd see men with long hair, but it was theirs, it wasn't wigs. But back then they would use wigs for that. Um, Victorian period is a mm -hmm. good to, to talk about because Queen Victoria, um, people did follow her style, but it was also a period of uh, that would become the Gilded Age. And that's one of my presentations, which was right after the Civil War in the 1860s to about the turn of the century. There's, you know, debate on how far it went, but just about the turn of the century or a little after that, uh, think about New York society and Newport, Rhode Island, where people would summer in Newport because they had they could afford to get out of the heat of New York mm -hmm. and go to Newport and live in these um, giant mansions, which they called summer cottages. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's where I got my first uh, experience was the breakers. And I know I talked about that last time and it um, it really did something to me. And it just the way they lived, it was gracious. It wasn't a great time for everybody because there were so many people who couldn't even afford to eat. But there were those in the upper echelons of society who, you know, the bustle period and, and the beautiful garments and accessories and what they surrounded themselves were with um, marble. Everything was marble. A lot was was copied from Europe. So whole rooms could be disassembled and then reassembled here. So that they had a European style, whatever was popular at the time. Fascinating. And um, wow. Yeah. So it's it's that's a good period for me to do. And then, of course, you've got the Downton Abbey age, which is 1912 through the 20s. I do. Then I do the Roaring 20s on its own. Um, I can do uh, the Golden Age of Hollywood, which oh, is yeah. I, well, I'd cover 30s through the 50s. Mm -hmm. And then the Mad Men is, um, even though Mad Men was supposed to be 60 to 69, I cover the 50s too, because ah. a lot of fashions were similar to the early 60s. So I cover all of that as well. And then there's um, the Swing in 60s. Mm -hmm. 70s is something I'd love to start doing. There was so much going on in music and fashion yeah. in the 70s. Um, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody about Queen. And Freddie Mercury Ooh. is one of my favorites of all time. And the fashions are fabulous. And I just would love to have, have the opportunity to, you know, to showcase that for people. Um, so, and, and those are my basic, I do more than that. I do Jane Austen era, which ah, is too. I remember that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the, the golden age, um, I did that the Hollywood style for the golden years is all about style uh, you know 50 and over or 60 and over and again just like the other one I talked about this ex helps women express themselves or men to express themselves and not be afraid to show a new personality that they might have now that they didn't have then or another aspect of their personalities one woman said to me it was a senior center and she came up to me and said I have a jacket in the closet I've had forever that has sequin epaulets on it. And I'm going to wear it to the oh. sequin center. I said, good, good for you. Wear awesome. it. Wear it. So they do get inspired. Um, but, you know, the opportunity to help people, uh, because fashion has always thought to be about the young. That is, in my opinion, not true at all. So, you know, I'd like to get the word out with that too, Jill, and, and make people feel happy again getting dressed. Oh, thank you for that. And thank yeah. you for being here again. And of let's, uh, oh my, it's time to go, unfortunately. I know. It goes like how do, I know. How do we contact you, sweetheart? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jill. It's spiritsoffashion.com. And uh, you get can contact me right from there. Or uh, you can DM me on Instagram at Spirits of Fashion Passion or on Facebook, Spirits of Fashion. And of course, my YouTube channel, which is Perfect. Spirits of Fashion. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you back here and looking Thank forward to here. next week. Are we back on again? 
Uh, not yet. No, oh. not yet. I just did the two for now. But oh, okay. Well, it's been a pleasure back. getting to know you and hopefully we'll reconnect again and best of I luck with so all too. your endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye, Thank sweetheart. You. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.